Does WD-40 work? No. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, so we have sound. Yeah, That's good. Hey, sound. everybody. Hey. hey. Um, welcome back to uh, Roll Die for Adventure. It's been a while. Uh, I took some time off. Had to readjust some stuff. And uh, got Adulting a new job. Adulting sucks. Yes. Yes. So I got a new job. And I've worked days now. But I probably will be working until like 8 o'clock at night. So God. who knows? I was like, yeah, I can come back to play some games. But maybe I won't. Mm. We'll see. Um, so tonight we're gonna take a. We were gonna play a little bit of Mummy's Mask, but uh-huh. you know, like everything, um, Discord was playing. Also, not Discord, but, uh, uh, someone OBS mm. was playing stupid. And, <laughs> yeah. I.e., me forgot my character sheet. And uh, no character sheet. So <laughs> that's I. Oops. It's okay. at least you showed up. <laughs> yeah. So if there's anybody out there more reliable that would like to play, please. <laughs> But yeah, we figured uh, you you you've seen at least the two of us, Allison and I, playing. But you probably don't know a whole heck of a lot about us. So I like figured, it that way. You guys have been here for five years. I yeah, know. I, I wanted to do everybody gets an interview like uh-huh. back in the day when we started. But yeah, yeah, we didn't get around to that. No, no. And now we've got our our, our what five year and a fuck anniversary yep. or whatever you want to call we, it. We want the fuck anniversary. Uh, we got big plans for that coming up. We do. Really yes, do. yes, we do. I don't know what they are, but... They're big? But they're big. Um, mm-hmm. So, there is another group coming to play mm-hmm. another game on s- uh, Wednesday nights. Cool. At 6 or whenever I get off work. <laughs> <laughs> they, they work nights, and uh-huh. we're going to be playing Call of Cthulhu. Ooh, nice. So, nice. I want the guys from Call of the Cthulhu uh-huh. to join you guys in a What the fuck anniversary for five years. What so it's <laughs> it's going to be four of them with two of you plus maybe Arn I want to bring back in and Shannon's going to come down and it'll be eight Chaos? people. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we're all going to be in here. I think we're all going to do it online. Oh, okay, let's do it. Mm-hmm. It yeah. like this is a pretty tight spot for eight people. Eight mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it'll be fun. Um, so oh, who wants to? Jason, how long have you been playing RPGs? Oh, God. Um, I started doing... Uh, I started playing, actually, when I was probably a junior or senior in high school. I uh, was doing AD&D 2nd uh, Ed. And, uh, it was, and that was because my brother and his friends were playing it. And they asked me, "Oh, do you want to want to want to join in?" It's like, oh, yeah, sure." And it's just been ever since. And I've got books upon books upon books of Second Ed that I are probably under the <laughs> under the the, uh, the the landing in my, my closet at home now. And so I've I've done everything from D and D to Star Wars. I've done a little bit of Star Trek. Um, I'm not a not a Trekkie to begin with, so. Wrong. I, <laughs> it's just wrong. <laughs> it was just never my thing. It's fine. I couldn't get into it. <laughs> and now it is. <laughs> the new stuff is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I didn't say anymore now. I've, I've, I've been kind of disappointed with the new Star Wars type stuff, but there's been some good stuff with that. But yeah, no, I mean, after that, it's just been kind of going back and forth and I've been in a, a few different groups and kind of played a bunch of different characters and I don't really like playing magic users all that often I'll, I'll play the, the, the odd cleric or, or priest type thing but <laughs> you know how I am with magic I'm like ah who cares <laughs> <laughs> magic missile. magic point <laughs> What do you need? I need something that's verbal and and, and, and and hand and then also materials. What are you looking at? Oh, just uh, the stream chat. I probably should have that on my phone. Yeah. But I don't know. Because last time we totally forgot about it. Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it's just... I, I've, I, I've enjoyed it. It's... One of the few ways that I've been able to express myself as not being myself, even though my own personality comes through in a lot of my characters. 
I've gotten a lot looser since then, so <laughs> I was always pretty rigid. Oh God! <laughs> I, <laughs> let's just put it this way: I I, I watched the video that uh, my brother and family took of me for my senior prom. It's like. I was an asshole. <laughs> oh my god! I look at it this way: if you were a senior, we were all assholes. We were all seniors. Like just, yeah, I look back at when I was like a freshman in college, and I'm like, oh god, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah, my roommates weren't great, but I was no gem. <laughs> like far, far, far away from me. Yeah. No, I was. I was an introverted asshole. Mm-hmm. Oh my, yeah. The Perfect for D&D back then. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, Allison? Great. How long have we been playing this? Yeah, five years? Yeah, I've been playing it five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you may remember her as the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. I hate this chair, sorry. No, no, you're fine. Uh, Nick was like, hey, we're doing a podcast thing, and can you come and fill in a spot? And I'm like, sure, what am I doing? And he's like, don't worry, we'll walk you through it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, for, for anybody who doesn't already know, the three of us used to work together in the same team. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, then it was fun, and I like doing it. I like making stuff up, and I'm very bad with the numbers. So <laughs> usually someone else does that part of it. And the dice. <laughs> hey, I roll pretty well. You roll pretty well. <laughs> but, was that a s- 10 or 6? A 20? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to make it a, a, a glass or a mug that says, what die do I need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which one is this? I know. I'm like, I don't know. Just tell me which one and I'll roll it. <laughs> so, yes. Um, the, uh, I grew up. In a very, 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 very small... It qualifies as a village, not as a town. Like, so tiny, tiny. And were there D&D players? I have no idea. I don't think so. Yeah. I think there were, like, farmers or something, and I, I don't know of anyone who did any role-playing games at all. Um, and I always been, like, like the idea of it. Like, ever since there was that, like, old Tom Hanks movie where, like, D&D, like, did him in, and he got lost oh, in Fantasyland. Monsters and Mazes? Yes. <laughs> mazes and Monsters? <laughs> oh, no! Poor Tom Hanks! <laughs> He's locked to the, to the magic world or whatever. I was like... So I'd always heard about it and stuff like that, but I didn't really understand what it was. And then I came here, and um, I'm bad at doing voices, and I'm not... Don't, uh, know the, don't know the dice. And I don't, you know... But they keep inviting me back or letting me show up, so I stick around. We just haven't locked the door yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're like every time I come walking in they're like oh, oh man it's too bad <laughs> and chaos ensues oh no <laughs> just look at her characters <laughs> I know well and then like I said with Zeldu I, I did make up the character sheet on my own based on the books I was reading however <laughs> I am very bad at it so uh, I, I was anything I came up with was literally like taken from a book. So, <laughs> and then I gave up on the books and I gave them all to Nick because I'm like I don't know what to do with these. I don't know. Yeah, they're over here. <laughs> like, here, here, just just the books. <laughs> and then I announced I want to pay to play a goblin. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Which is awesome. I yes. love I love this team. Like, <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. This is gonna be fun. Like when we finish. Because we've got a long way to go. And uh, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how I'm going to do this with an archaeologist and a bomb-throwing <laughs> goblin. Yeah, uh, we're like, let's go underground into a thing. And I'm like, can I throw a bomb? And you're like, no! <laughs> like, what about now? Yeah. No! <laughs> you, you're going to... <laughs> It's like Temple of Doom if, um, if Short Round <laughs> threw dynamite. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason's like doing the logical things, thankfully, because otherwise we'd still be stuck like in like room one. That that there also would have been a cave in and we would have all been buried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And new characters ensued. <laughs> I know. Um, so yeah, so that the role playing games, I like them. I'm 
I've been looking into, I keep telling Nick that I want to run a, like a one-off or run a game and then not making the plan for it. Uh, so, but I, I will. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I don't have a plan most days. That's okay. Um, but I, I got this book. I got Into the Odd, and I'm kind of interested in playing that one. So, um, and then I got a bunch of like one-offs, including one where it's Cat Bodega, which is a great one-off where everybody's cats in a bodega. So, yes. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't want to be a cat. No, you're being a cat. I don't want to be a you're cat. You're a cat. Can I be a moose? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bodega. You can be a cat bodega. that thinks it's a moose. <laughs> I can work with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. It's a bodega cat that thinks it's a moose. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, Nick, how did you get into role playing? Oh, okay. So, I was at Hobby Town. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, God. My, that's right. That up by Shop Co. in Bellevue. Um, I used to see them at, uh, at the comic store. I'd be like, those look kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, d and I don't know. Uh, I'm not really big into fantasy. I didn't like Conan that much. And What? I like the movie. Okay. But I didn't like the comics and stuff. I, I have the soundtrack that I spent extra money <laughs> to get the soundtrack to Conan the Barbarian because it kicks ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I was in uh, I was in Hobby Town and they had the Marvel role playing game boxes, mm-hmm. and so I picked those up. And me and my friends, we didn't read the books. We just made our own system up and played like Perfect. two adventures. And um, then one of my friends got the DC one. We played a little bit of DC, and then I bought Star Wars, and that was really complicated for me. And then I got the blue box of D and D for my uncle. And they were like, "We don't play this anymore here." Take this. <laughs> so first at D and D, holy shit. Okay, never mind. Let's put that aside. That was way too much. Um, then I gave up for a long time, and then I would work in a comic shop, and then I'd see like three point five on the on the racks, and I was like, man, I want to play this. And my friends are like, that's for nerds. I'm like we live work in a comic shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I got into uh, Hero Clicks and Mage Knight. I got a whole bunch of them. And we started playing mm-hmm. that, and then I moved here, and uh, you asked me if you could borrow Marvel. I was like, yeah, go ahead, take it. And so he borrowed it, and I was like, I don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just finished up. I'm like, ah, we're playing D&D now. Like, oh, all right, fine. And I was like, I'm not that, I'm not nerdy enough. I'm not nerd. That's another, another level of nerd I've never wanted to get to. <laughs> and now look. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I like, yeah, and I, I was one of those people who, like, I always wanted to understand it and get into it, but again, no access, because middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, yeah. I was in sixth grade, mm-hmm. I just started reading comics, and the, the nerds in the class, who apparently I wasn't, or I was either way nerdier then, or n- not as nerdy, I'm not quite sure, but... Mm-hmm. We were sort of friends, and they would have a, a night where they would play D and D. I never got asked to play. Mm-hmm. I was like, I got plenty of time, guys. <laughs> I play my Nintendo and I go to bed. That's pretty much all I do. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it uh, was uh, funny when I finally started playing stuff. Also, I'm very like sometimes like I like the ones that are more unstructured too. Like I, when it gets too unstructured, stru- you said. Yes. Okay. When it gets too structured, then I just, it's like then you're just following more rules that are arbitrary and made up, and there's lots of numbers, and I'm like, well, this is like work. I don't like work. I'm doing this not at work. So. <laughs> and hence why Allison's handbag of holding head was. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Was 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 found. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm very into, okay, what is around, what can I use, what would I use that would be easily accessible here? <laughs> yeah. You notice I don't pull out, like, a machine gun or anything like that. It's usually, like, you know, hairspray or mm-hmm. <laughs> a lighter or something like that. Or a combination of the two. <laughs> yes. Um Space balls, the flamethrower. Yep. Kids, like! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because that's not my answer. My interest isn't in pulling out, like, the biggest, baddest weapon. My interest is in what can I come up with that would yeah. work and also make me fucking laugh. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's not, if we're not doing that, we're not doing it right, so. Yeah. <laughs> Rules, we don't need rules. <laughs> if there was a system that we would start playing, I mean, because mm-hmm. Pathfinder, we're going we're gonna to play this for a little while, mm-hmm. but, um, and I still want to get back to the Warriors, the Gnome Warriors. <laughs> the Gnome Warriors? Oh, the Gnome Warriors. Uh, not the Norm, no, Goblin Warriors. Goblin, Goblin Warriors, Warriors. Yes. yeah. I get Gnomes and Warriors mixed up in my brain for some reason. Um, <laughs> I still want to get back to that, too, mm-hmm. but if there was a game that we got together to play what would you guys want to play oh gosh good question I, I I've been I look at a lot of the indies because I just I I find I think it's intriguing to look at something that's that someone thought of on their own kind of off the cuff and I kind of like the games where you don't have as many battles it's more like community building kind of things if that makes sense um, there's there's a couple of games like that, and I'm trying to remember what the names of them are. But there's like one where there was like there was um, an apocalypse, and you're trying to like rebuild a community after that. Um, we could play Fallout. Fallout. There's, there's a Fallout <laughs> RPG mm-hmm. where you're just going around the wasteland trying to get shit. And then there's uh, I think there's one called Yeah, there was Neighborhood or something like that. Uh, uh, it's just a uh, sort of a community of, um, you know, the Japanese um, monsters, yaka- uh, uh, the kaiju. Yeah. Well, there's kaiju. These are yokai. The yokai. Yokai. Yeah. These are more yokai, less the kaiju. I like the kaiju too, but these are more yokai. So. Nice. Mhm. And then you know, cat bodega. Cat <laughs> bodega. Why not? <laughs> um, there's like. Honey heist would be fun. I think. Yeah. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. There's like uh, a Girl Scouts kind of one that just came nice. out. Um, you uh, earn badges and fight monsters. There's also this one. <laughs> there was one that was like based on Native American stuff. That like there's a newer one where they kind of base it on Native American um, uh, mythology. Nice. And uh, they're um, so they're it's Native American mythology, and they are. Um, the uh, colonization of the United States didn't happen. So, it's interesting. Oh, God. I mean, I just... Better think faster. I'm going to keep talking. Go. I know. I was, like, I, Go, I, I was never I much for Starcraft. I think we should make a with a haunted mansion sometime. Like, just a haunted mansion. And instead of, like, teenagers, like adults who get stuck trying to... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because teenagers is all fun and, 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 and but it's kind of been like an escape dumb. room. <laughs> escape room. <laughs> a haunted really? escape room. Uh, well, I've seen like, like haunted clue. <laughs> yeah, haunted clue, or a haunted house that you're moving into that you've just spent all your money on it and you're just gonna make it work. Because money pit. <laughs> because <laughs> <Amityville>. <laughs> split, cross between money pit and a haunted mansion. <laughs> where you're like, I am not leaving this place. Get out. No, I got a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to want to buy this place now. It's a bed and breakfast, and we will make money. <laughs> it's not like ghosts, but not like go- not like ghosts. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll have to write these all down. You say, for me, I, mean, I, I, I never played the, the, uh, the game StarCraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the computer at all, and we just mm-hmm. didn't have a computer that would uh, that could handle it. Um, and by the time we did have one that could handle it, it was too advanced for StarCraft. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's StarCraft? It, it's. I mean, I'm assuming it's outer space stuff. Yeah, it's it's it it is. It's not like Star Trek where. Um, well, it, it is kind of like Star Trek, I mean, but you've, you've got more uh, factions that are out there that are kind of going around and trying to colonize mm-hmm. wor- uh, worlds and everything. But um, So it, it'd be one of those things where it's like, yeah, you're, you're doing that, but it's more along the lines of 
kind of also kind of crossing over with a little bit of the Star Trek where you're going out and you're trying to explore the worlds, not necessarily colonize them or take them over, but uh, uh, running across certain scenarios, like, uh, whether it's like, okay, uh, <laughs> these two in the continents are battling each other with, with uh, what is now considered primitive to, to Starfleet Command, but are like still world-ending, like nuclear... <laughs> Yeah. power type thing but also uh, then, but combine it with uh, an older age almost like a now that I think of it kind of along the lines of serenity and yeah. uh, uh, that entire series um, it's like the, the space cowboys <laughs> Like a space western. Yeah. What about to yeah. you? What would I want to play? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's played everything. Something I don't have to read about. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I really want to play Marvel again. I really want to play that. I want to play superheroes and stuff. Uh, we really didn't get a good grasp of it when we played. We we missed some rules. Um, um, kind of. I pretty much flew by the seat of our pants on that game. So yeah. Then we kind of want to get back into those. Uh, there I did some, not play that one, so. No. Um, there's a game by Palladium that we that I bought. Um, it's during Y2K. And uh, nice. you you find out that uh, Y2K is actually going to happen, and it was an alien threat. And they invade while the systems are down. Nice. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> I remember a... being on a bus during Y2K and someone had this little like Y2K like animated thing like it was a like a doll that you would press a button and it would go Y2K Y2K and then go <laughs> <laughs> one of the girls at work has a We Survived Y2K shirt and she wears it all the time <laughs> nice. um, another one I want to play is uh, called in... oh, it's not called Insomnia it's um, Paranoia Oh, okay. And you're you're in the future, and you mm -hmm. live in a bunker, and you're all part of a secret society. You're in a secret society, but not my secret society. I'm in mm -hmm. another one, and he's in another one, and she's in another one, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you all have different things that you want to accomplish, mm -hmm. but the computer overlord is fucking with you. <laughs> nice. So somebody has to be, like, the computer, and somebody has to be. Oh, no, that sounds like. too much like aliens. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but it, it gets really funny. Well, they have, um, uh, uh, yeah. Whenever they have secret societies, like, in theory, it always sounds so good. And then you, like, hear about what the secret society is and the members of it. And you're like, oh, it's a bunch of, like, tools who just meet up and pat each other on the back a lot. Mm hmm. Um, that kind of. It's, it's almost like, uh, oh, you know, it's the treehouse where there's like, no one's allowed in but us. <laughs> girls no, not girls. allowed. No, you gotta give the secret signal to get in here. <laughs> Kill on me, small. It's secret. <laughs> I always laugh when conspiracy theorists are like, it's the Masons. And I'm like, the Masons, when I was involved, are just a bunch of old guys who like to play dress up. <laughs> And wear purses. Yeah, they wear aprons and um, kilts. They, they do the same ritual the whole time. And Dozens. I don't remember them doing anything. Mm -hmm. Not to the wall, but it's very weird. It was a very weird time in my life when I was out. But okay. Um, I don't know. If there was one character that you've played oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that you could meet in <laughs> real life, who would it be? In real life? Yes. If 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 if, if our yeah. characters were to mm -hmm. all of a sudden just spring up off the paper mm -hmm. and and uh, be, become real in the flesh and blood. Zeldu. I would meet <laughs> Zeldu. Zelda would be great. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's who I would meet. I would meet Zeldu, just a chaotic, 
almost cat looking toothy goblin <laughs> that dresses up and dances around a lot and <laughs> likes to throw bombs. Uh, I, I, it kind of almost makes me think of um, The Tick where they had the midnight bomber what bombs <laughs> are midnight. Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I watched again. I watched that episode again on Hulu because it just makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I said, the, the, the Muppet that reminds me of Zeldu is Crazy Harry. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Dynamite box. Ugh. <laughs> What about you, Nick? Of all the characters we've played? Uh... And you've done so many NPCs, too. I've done so many NPCs. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to bring it over to you for right. what I think about. <laughs> I'm going to say, if it was one of my characters, I think I want. I would want to meet Agent Schwa. Agent Schwa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If, if 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 it had to be anybody else's, um, I I I almost kind of wanted uh, want to meet um, uh, Albus. 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 <laughs> Who's you watched Albus? the Dungeons and Dragons movie? Well, I have not yet. No. no. There's Eric Oker in there. <laughs> nice. Cracks me up. <laughs> uh, it's on Paramount Plus. I think I yeah. watched it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been waiting for it to uh, get on Amazon. To, well, Amazon or uh, Netflix for free, but I'm no guessing dice Amazon because Paramount Plus stuff seems to land on Amazon. So yeah, that's it, cause that, that's where uh, Top Gun Maverick landed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still you have to. I still have to like, watch that. <laughs> Maverick's it's, great. It it is good. I will admit it is good. I want to see. I have not gotten around to see Barbie, and that sounds like it's just a delight. So, yeah. I haven't seen it. Anti Man. <laughs> so is Barbie. What? I'm just kidding. It's be anything you want to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what Barbie is about. I'm actually. I want to see the, the Super Mario. Brothers That's on movie. Uh, Peacock right now. Yep. Yeah, I don't got it. Okay. Oh. I have Peacock because my mom is a uh, Days of Our Lives uh, devotee. And they moved Days of Our Lives to Peacock. And I'm like, okay, Mom, I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it for commercialists. I get the Universal movies, too, which is cool. I like the Universal movies. I'm like, here's the login. Here's where you go. Here's how you sign in. And it only took me 45 minutes to get her to fill out the username and the password on her TV. So that's actually a win. (laughs) (laughs) No, the uppercase. The uppercase. No, uppercase. No, not S. <laughs> not S. No. Parents and technology. But, can you, you know, but yet she's on Facebook constantly, so she is not tech, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so it was a game before we played together. Um, uh-huh. I played uh, Rifts with Steve before we played this, um, before we started the podcast. And uh, I created uh, Pyromancer Daredevil. <laughs> nice. And his name was Buck Tucker. <laughs> and he's from he's from Missouri, so he had an accent, and uh, he would just do outlandish shit. And he, he could create like this pitchfork made out of fire, and he would just like because his daddy said like. His, his powers are from the devil, so he created a pitchfork made out of fire. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of him right there. Nice. <laughs> so, he's my favorite character. Like he would jump onto dinosaurs and punch them in like the back of the, th- like, the napkin, and then kill them. And... <laughs> nice. Like oh, it's only sixty feet, and you jump off a cliff, and then <laughs> <laughs> he could. He's gonna die. No, he's not. And I rolled really well on him. I don't know why. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was real fun. I really missed that character. But um, I, I, we would play so many different games, mm-hmm. and uh, we would never finish. And it was just like, oh no, uh, kind of like here where we kind of like play, and then we're like, oh, I want to play this, and then we go, and we play something else. Yeah. We do tend to finish them though. Or somebody would leave, and then you're like, no, I, the momentum's gone, mm-hmm. and like uh, the feeling is different. So yeah, um, but. 
I still I still have a list of games I want to play, like GI Joe, and uh, there's a Transformers one that came out, and there's uh, I don't think Power Rangers would do very well, but <laughs> we'll be just fighting us, fight some giant monsters. So Voltron, Voltron, is great. <laughs> but uh, I have a a Macross or a Battletech or a Macross. Robotech. I, I used to, I watched Robotech Macross all the time when I was growing up. Yeah, that would be fun. Mm-hmm. It was probably my favorite like anime. So yeah, it's it's in the top ten, mm-hmm. and I just can't get past Min May. Yeah, like she's, yeah, the, the whole like oh, the singing is the the key to the the proto culture. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> she's the worst. And he's like, I love Min May. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> But it's like actual death in cartoons. Yeah. I was like, oh god, they're good. I know, and like I like this. Rex was it Rex Taylor? Re- Re- Rick, yeah. Rick Tyler? Rick? What's his name? Like the guy that had the his wife and yeah. Yeah, and the, his. They had a whole relationship with his wife, and then he died. Yeah. Yeah, it's like death. It's like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there wasn't like any coming back. They would have his wife would remember him, mm-hmm. but he didn't. He he didn't like pop back to life you know um so yeah um jason said who he wanted to meet who do you want to meet out of the characters out of the character buck tucker that's so you want to play that, so that, i would like to play him again but i would like to meet him in real person because i think he'd be insane <laughs> who who is someone else played who you would like to meet that i've played uh, uh that someone else is yes oh that somebody else has played yes oh shit so <laughs> uh, i just spent the last two years working with mixed band angles. Literally. <laughs> uh, two years working with that guy. So, um... Oh, God. That's a... Yeah. Um, I don't know how well that would go over. <laughs> it was insane. Like, at least there was at least two of them. There was two mixed band angles I worked with. <laughs> uh, one guy, I swear to God, every day he would come in and I'd be like, did a like a skunk fart in your mouth before you got here? <laughs> yeah. like he was just Odd. high all the time. But it was like, okay, whatever. Uh, it's post office, so yeah. Um, uh, and so if we were going that route, I mean, I, I, I don't want to have to go with uh, Jan the man, but yeah, just, think, to, just, just to hear the voice again. I think I'd want to meet the wrestling people. <laughs> the, whole, the whole crew. <laughs> I don't know how long I'd survive. <laughs> You're like, can I meet them like through like a glass, right, impenetrable yeah. glass, or through a just like talk? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we were cloned because we died a lot. We died, a lot. <laughs> died a lot, and I wasn't like. Well, the clone, our clones died a lot. Yes, they died a lot. <laughs> I know. Yeah, there, there, there's one person I did would not want to meet, even though. It's, it was hilarious. Splooge Julie. Splooge. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to convince him to come back. How's that going? He's busy too. Yeah. Henry's like three now. Oh, God. So. Where's the time go? I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soap's almost eight. I've got a sophomore in high school. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. My and then the fifth grader. Senior. So, yes. Um, do you get, like we were talking about anime, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I was in there, and my friends are like talking about how they went to see Blue Beetle, and I'm like, okay, I can't see it. I don't want to see it. I've already seen it. Back in the '90s, there was a movie <laughs> called The Giver, and we all watched it, and it's the exact same thing. Like when I was reading like the the comics when. Uh-huh. Jaime Reyes came out and the scarab comes out of his, his body mm-hmm. I was like that's what the, the Giver does this little <laughs> thing on his back and it goes right out and it covers his body and mm-hmm. he's a superhero like it's the same thing and, like he's a little bit cooler looking <laughs> <laughs> well I mean technology has advanced oh, the Giver yeah. still looks better <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like, uh, the second movie was all the fight scenes were choreographed by the guys at Power Rangers you know so they had super high like spin kicks and shit. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll admit, I mean, I growing up, I did not watch a lot of anime because we didn't have cable. You also had three video cassettes at Blockbuster. You had, mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, Vampire Under D. Uh, what other was was there? There was, like, GoGo 13 and uh, Doomed Megalopolis were, like, the three that were there. <laughs> and, like, occasionally some battles, like, uh, Robotex. Mm-hmm. But See, we didn't have anything. Now you open there and it's, like, yeah. Yeah. on the wall. You know. Well, and the one I saw, like, it was the only one that I really saw. And it was just because uh, this TV station, it was this one-off TV station... Before it got taken over by ABC, but it was called Big Eight, and they would play it, and so that was I would see Robo Robotech Macross. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't and Star Trek and stuff like that, and they didn't play um, like uh, any other anime or anything like that. It was like the only one. But then um, when I finally moved to, to a place where I had cable because cable was expensive and I was poor and cheap. Uh, but I had roommates who were like, let's get cable. And I was like, okay. And then they would have Adult Swim and I would watch like some of the anime there. And I think I got into um, uh, the one with the brothers. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist? Yes. Mm. Full Metal Alchemist, which is great. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I'll watch some others, but when you start off with like really good ones <laughs> it gets kind of hard yeah. it gets really hard <laughs> Cause, mm-hmm. and I think the first anime I remember seeing and I would I was never I was never able to get through all of it because it was just one of those things where they if they started over it was it, they didn't start at the beginning mm-hmm. um, but Zoids 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 <laughs> I love that silver uh, white uh, cat that they just brought that out. They have a new one out. Oh, is there? Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. And then after that, it was uh, the, the, the next one that I remember watching anything of was Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yep. Uh, I just finished watching all what, the first 150 episodes of Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? Okay. <laughs> Goku's strong. Somebody comes down and stronger. He trains. Gets stronger, fights again, beats him. New guy comes down, stronger, gets stronger, fights him, beats him. Like, I get it. Yeah. Well, who, 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 who do you think would win between One Punch Man and Goku? Um, see, Goku would have to. He would get defeated first time. Then we go and train. <laughs> then he come back down, beat him, and then somebody else. Come back. Well, but, but the thing is, is, with One Punch, one punch man, man, though, he's invincible, right? So, okay, yeah. if he beats Goku the first time and Goku comes back, comes back even stronger, and One Punch Man would just <laughs> so it'd just be that, in my mind, it would just like, be an endless cycle. Because yep. one one won't die, he'll just keep coming back. <laughs> that was pretty good, One Punch Man. Yeah. Um. I have to admit too, once watching the, the the episodes that we did of Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk, um, Edge Runners on uh, uh, one of those Thursdays. Oh uh, yeah, that was that was that was interesting too for a kind of more of a, a graphic. Oh, did you guys watch it? Uh, we watched the first three or four episodes nice. of yeah. it, I think. Yeah, I think um, there were some other ones that. <laughs> Cyberpunk was based off like Bubblegum something, Bubblegum Pop or something like that. I was going to watch those and then I didn't because that would have been almost like homework. <laughs> um, the intention was there, but the follow through was not. So. <laughs> nice. yeah. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so then I pulled out some high school. Uh, High School Musical? Yearbooks. Oh. <laughs> I got distracted. I pulled out High School Yearbooks, and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember high school. That fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped through it, and they're like, we, they were all idiots. Yeah. I was an idiot, too, but they were all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, again, smarter, but still, <laughs> it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... So we had any questions come in? To no, no. Anybody got any questions they want to ask us? Because feel free, because I'm running out of questions to ask anybody else. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I have questions. All right. Oh God. 
Uh, okay, <laughs> what happens, uh, do you think, when uh, you get stuck uh, looking into the void? <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> My wife thinks this happens to me all the time when I'm sitting there watching TV. It's like, you, you just zone out. <laughs> no, I'm just hyper-focused on the TV, and I'm able to zone out all other stuff around me. <laughs> and then she blames me, too, because our youngest daughter has that exact same ability. <laughs> <laughs> and I see where, 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 where it gets annoying, because you sit there, it's like... Come on! <laughs> Over here! <laughs> uh, I think you wake up and you're a supervisor at uh, some financial institution. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm no longer a supervisor. No, no. <laughs> you got your soul back. <laughs> say being a supervisor or being a manager or supervisor it's kind of like undergoing the penance stare yeah <laughs> I can't wait I'm sure it'll be very different where, where you are I don't know come down come see me I'm down in Ralston next week <laughs> Ralston yep uh, right. we'll, we's we'll find out Everybody's like, oh, you're doing what? Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, but it's okay. We'll figure it. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. I know. I uh yes. Yes. Uh um I think that uh yeah. I don't know. I'm wondering if you look in and then you see like yourself looking back. <laughs> I don't know, when I for me it's my, my version of if I was looking in the void it would be the one scene from Spaceballs <laughs> with, in the, in the, with the video and it's like well, <laughs> going, going through the, that, that, that was then this is now and you just can't and walk back and <laughs> that's just all the, 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 <laughs> the infinity yeah. yeah what about now now oh I can't go there can we go yeah. back I will say um there's, uh, I did find this out for my sister. My sister uh, was talking, was, this is a little bit related to high school, but not really. But my sister was back at our hometown, and when she was there, there was a guy who was two years ahead of me she was talking to. And he was talking to her, he's like, yeah, he's like, when me and your sister went out, uh, we, you know, we did all this stuff. And Sarah's like, uh-huh. And then my sister comes to me and she's like, well, Brad was telling me that when you and him went out, and I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> And I'm like, I hate to interrupt you. I never went out with Brad, like, at all. Like, not even a date. And she's like, I didn't think so either, but it seemed rude to interrupt him. <laughs> so, I just, I'm kind of wondering, I'm like, it was, like, did he just make this up in his head? He seemed to believe it. Like, was he in a parallel universe and got shoved over into ours? Like... <laughs> Or is he, he, just he, he substituted his own reality for her. <laughs> I know. But apparently, like, like not just like went on a date, but dated. Like he like had a whole thing, and I'm like, I like never went out with him, like at all. Um, and I'm wondering, like, how many other <laughs> glitches in the matrix there are? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And how many other people I've apparently dated that I don't know anything about? <laughs> Like back home. It must have been tra uh, traumatic experience. You just blocked out that entire. <laughs> yep. yeah. I mean, he is kind of a douche, so I mean, I wouldn't question that. But yeah. I'm pretty sure I really didn't. I'm really, really sure I did not date him. And my sister t confirmed, no, you didn't date him at all. <laughs> like I just, I hate to interrupt you. I hate to, but I just. No, it <laughs> um, but no. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm wondering, like, also, I'm like, can you do that? Just create your own memories. Like, just get stuck creating something in your head so strongly that you believe that it happened. I think you can. I think you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
in my mind, that would be most, uh, well, not, wouldn't have to be insane, but I mean, mm-hmm. it would be some sort, of, some sort of psychosis, I would think. Mm-hmm. I just believe it so much that, oh, that actually happened, and, mm-hmm. yeah. Or if you, like, daydream it enough or something like that, like, get okay. stuck in daydream land and... Because there was, uh, I was listening to the radio and they were talking about how you can delete memories. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have bad memories you want to delete. Yeah. They're like, cognitively, you just think about the bad memory. Mm-hmm. And then you visualize yourself walking through a doorway. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's your brain, when you go through a door, it resets. I believe that, because do so you know how many times I walk through a door? You walk through a door and you forget what you're doing? Yeah. It's this thing. And I have to back like, out the door and try to, like, recall. <laughs> I might have to try that with my entire uh, senior (laughs) experience. Oh, mine mine was like grade school, junior high, high school, like the lot. If you can imagine going to a school where like you go to kindergarten with the same 18 kids that you graduated high school with. I probably would have shot myself. I was like... (laughs) And they're like, you just daydreamed and didn't talk to anybody. I'm like, yeah, I just want it out. <laughs> like, I, I would do anything just to, like, I'm like, and then, like, they're like, did you drink in high school? I'm like, no, because I want it out. <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't screw up and get, like, a DUI or an MIP or anything like that because I want it out. <laughs> out of this town. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't do a thing. <laughs> I was always scared to death of what my dad would do to me because he always told me the horror stories of what all the trouble he got into. I was like, oh, God, he's done everything. If I do something, he's going to know. <laughs> when my parents, like, were, like, getting really strict, if they were really strict about your, um, like, our curfew, they would have two alarm clocks. One <laughs> set the time they woke up in the morning, one set to curfew. And you had to come home and get the curfew one turned off. And they would usually wake up enough so that you couldn't, like, pay off your siblings to go do it for you. So, they'd wake up enough to know that you were the one turning it off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Granted, they would, like, give a lot. Like, if the weather was kind of bad or something like that, if you were a little late, they didn't care. But um, it was still, like, you can't overdo it or... <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got a question. If you were to wake up as any character out of any world, any universe, any book, anything, kind of like as as a self insert, mm-hmm. what would it, what, what 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 character would that be? I've read too many books. There's too many options. <laughs> You're gonna have to go to Nick first. I'm gonna sit here forever. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't you don't understand like how much stuff I've read. I'm like, Greek mythology, no, they're kind of jerks. Norse mythology, no, they're also jerks. Like, contemporary stuff, there's a lot of jerks in there. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what, like, what world would you want to, like, because, so it would not only be meeting them, but it would be in the world, or would it be, like, would you, like, be in their world to meet them, or would you be, like... No, you, you actually wake up as that individual. Oh. In that, in that... Yeah, in that, in that, in that world. Oh, there's so many options. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. you. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> up at Mumra, so I'm already getting distracted. <laughs> Mumra? <laughs> I'm already getting distracted by the idea of Thundercats. That would be Monkey. <laughs> Thundercats, because he doesn't do anything. He gets... Schnarf? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to be a burbear or whatever they're called. <laughs> burbear, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Burbear, burbear. Yeah, they <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to be just yeah, somebody from. Uh, let's see, what, uh, if you could be, the, I would be Clutch in GI Joe. Clutch doesn't do anything. He just sits and watches the monitor. <laughs> He's supposed to drive, but he doesn't drive. He's always just sitting there. Um, like, he's not going to get shot. Well, no one ever died in G.I. Joe to no. begin with. <laughs> Duke was supposed to. He was supposed to, but they couldn't because it was a cartoon and killed kids were watching yeah. it. Okay. I'm just, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to limit it to 80s cartoons, because we had, like, G.I. Joe, so I'm going to limit it to 80s cartoons in the land you want to be in, stuff like that, and I'm going to be in Gem and the Holograms, <laughs> because <laughs> it was awesome, and there's, you know, music, and um, I'm going to, you know what, I would be, uh, 
screw it. Jim and the holograms are too nice. I'd be one of the misfits. Yeah, um, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad choice. Uh huh. I would be one of the misfits, and um, the, there was a nicer one out of the group. I couldn't. I don't. I don't think I would be one of the more mean spirited ones. But there was a nice one in that group, and I would be the nice, the nice one. Yeah. I changed my mind. Yes. I'd be in Ninja Turtles, but I would be the guy that hangs out with April all the time in the van. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman. Yeah. Burn. <laughs> I think, I think it's more fun to limit it to something like 80s cartoons. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, can, I can work with that. Let's see here. Uh, Are you going to be eight? in Gem of the Holograms, too? No. Well, that's just a bit of lack of taste I, I, on this I, I, I was <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking of... Um, Mask, where they, like... What was the one where they, like, turned weird. into, like... The helmets would come down from the ceiling. <laughs> What was the one where they turned into like cars? It was like people who turned into cars. Uh, there was uh, pole position. Pole position, yeah. Oh wow! I don't know. Or uh, yeah, because they were just like whoop, turn into a car. They're like, isn't this great? I'm like, there are so many problems with this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say uh, if we're going '80s cartoons, I'd probably have to go with one of the Silver Hawks. Yep, that'd be good. The Silver Hawks. Yeah. So much better than Thundercats. So much better. <laughs> Everybody thinks that Thundercats came first, but. Silver Hawks was made first. Yeah. Nice. There's three versions. There's a was sea, there? There's a sea tigers or ocean. They're like in the ocean where they're, they're fish. Mm-hmm. I, I just remember. I, I can't remember his name. I, I, I keep wanting to call him Tex, but the the, the one that uh, he was the main pilot mm-hmm. of, of their plane yeah. and he had the guitar and, and, and the. the mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was always. I, was, I haven't watched that. I was, I always like saying they'd come down and, and then the, the wings would come out and they had the little lasers on their shoulders and the masks that would come down. And... <laughs> I don't know if I've seen Silverhawks. So I'll have to do that. I just never right. got around to it. It's really good. Um, if you can handle... It's the same premise. Yeah. It's um, an 80s cartoon for kids. So yeah. I, it's, it's made by be... Thundercats so it's exactly the same. Gotcha. There's a big bad enemy that changes in the moonlight. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I think the villains in Thunder or Silver Hawks was a lot better. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Yeah. Was it Monstar? Monstar. Monstar. Yeah, I know. With Gem and the Holograms, and she's like, "These are my secret earrings to do this." I'm like, yeah, "Synergy," which is my least favorite word in the entire world. Synergy. <laughs> it is like moist. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> Synergy is the worst. That for me, that just like bugs the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Yes. So yeah, um, good question, and yeah, you got to be with the misfits. All right, do the nineties cartoons then. Ooh, 90, oh, oh, what are, what are, what are, what are, are the nineties cartoons, cartoons? Right? Uh, I'm gonna be a dog yet. <laughs> um, Jimmy Neutron. Oh God. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be fairly odd parents. That's the only one I have. Left. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I forgot about the little um, the birds that they. So I have a, a copper kid, but he's somewhere. But Sophie plays with the whistle. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, kid! I uh, I think the tick was '90s, right? Yep. I would be in the tick, and I would be like the waitress at a restaurant or something like that. Just watch like stuff get destroyed <laughs> constantly. <laughs> But the, but the you know the the waitress at the restaurant they're at the restaurant never seems to get hit by anything so yeah I, no <laughs> I just I, the idea of a bunch of superheroes battling to be the superhero for the city and they all get sent there and they're all like just just the, you know the most ridiculous and amusing and sea urchin and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah chameleon who can't do plaid yep. <laughs> Ugh, falls off the wall. Yes. Yeah, Tick is great. Mm-hmm. Sony hates it. I love it. Um, wow. Why did I bring up '90s cartoons? Uh, the only cartoon that I'm coming up with from the '90s that I remember watching in the '90s was Space Ghost. <laughs> but I think he was coast even, to coast was, where he yeah. was yeah, interviewing. Coast. <laughs> I like Brack. 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 Uh, Dexter's Lab. Oh, uh, Powerpuff Girls were there. Yeah. Dexter's Lab. Um, they had uh, the uh, cartoon Foster's cartoon. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yeah. Okay, I remember that vaguely. Mm-hmm. Was Cow and Chicken? Was that 
later? With Dexter? It might have been. Ren and Stimpy like, was uh, 90s. Oh, <laughs> no, no, thanks. <laughs> Same with uh, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> that would be... That would be the place to go. <laughs> would be Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Uh, was Invader Zim 90s? Or 2000s? I don't remember. 2000s, I think. Okay. I think Simpsons started in the 90s, too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was in 5th, 7th grade. Maybe should, you gotta yeah. turn that shirt inside out. We used to get the feed to that, like we had a satellite, and then one of the few things we got was a Fox feed, so we would get the feed for Simpsons. I don't know. I, I like the Simpsons, but it just, for some reason, it just doesn't, like, it's good. I like it, but it's not, I don't. The season I'm, of the Futurama came out. I didn't really, yeah. Is it good? It's great. Nice. They make fun of themselves. Like, hey, we're rebooted again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't know for if I was to take you know, wake up in any of the 90s cartoons I, I, I do this yeah you wouldn't last very long in Futurama because they have like, suicide dudes and like, yeah. you get yeah. killed all the time <laughs> the antimatter yep you get sucked in by a giant green alien <laughs> got Zap Brannigan doing stupid shit <laughs> or, or, do, or uh, eating a, uh, a sandwich that was in the, the vending machine yep. for too long <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got an intestinal worm that talks to him. Yeah. Stays on that uh, um, so Batman, the animated series, Captain Planet, Animaniacs, Recess, Red Rats. Freakazoid. Real Monsters, Freakazoid. I remember Freakazoid. Dexter's Laboratory, Beavis and Butter, Drum, Sunday King of the Hill. Ooh, Pinky and the Brain. Uh, hey Arnold, Ed, Ed, Eddie. Johnny Bravo. That's what I can do. I can do Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I, I, I always got a kick out of watching them. Gargoyles. Uh, she loves Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Courage the Cowardly Dog. The Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Yes. Yes. That, I, it would be that one. And I, I, I would want to be the Grim Reaper. I'd, I'd want to be Grim. <laughs> that sweet Jamaican accent. <laughs> I know. No, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, because if, like, I'm glad we limited it to areas, because otherwise if you go, like, the whole of literature, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many decisions. And I would end up in, like, some romance book someplace. Why? <laughs> because I, you're happily ever after stuff, right? The stuff where it just turns out okay. It's all good. Um, I don't knock by the way that is not a knock against romance novels I love romance novels they are great um, it's, it's the same as, as any other genre you know it's uh, and there are a lot of them that are pretty well written so yeah, it would be my luck I'd wake up as like some hero and all that and I'd screw something up and then I'd wake up again I was like oh that went well <laughs> <laughs> you just be Bill Murray in uh, Groundhog, Groundhog Day, Day. <laughs> I I didn't really like. I should like Groundhog Day, but I didn't like Groundhog Day. The, I don't know. I just, I just didn't. The concept's great. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole like. But Bill Murray as a romantic lead. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, and he would like <laughs> do this stuff to stalk this gal, and it was like this is just creepy. <laughs> this is really creepy. Um, and then the they had the one multiplicity. Which, here's the thing, I, like, didn't like the movie, but I love Steve. Like, <laughs> the movie. I think everyone likes Steve. Yes. We're going to go eat you that doll thing. <laughs> There's a copy of a copy of a copy. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> you actually let him shit. And then we, we took the razor out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I didn't like, like, Multiplicity itself was, the reason that I like the movie is just for Steve. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Well, Mike I, I, Michael Keaton, I, that, that was by He's far good. one of his best performances. <laughs> They're doing another Beetlejuice right now. They are, so. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he remembers how to do comedy. He's, he was, he was, a, you know, he, I think he will. I think he's got the yeah, rhythm be, for it. He'll be fine. Yeah. I don't know. I think, like, when you talk about movies, there are two types of movies that I think really 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 take timing you have to have really good timing and those are 
horror movies and comedies. Those are the two types of movies where you have to have good timing or you're not going to be good in those movies. You know? Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're like offbeat and then you're like, you're supposed to scream. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yes. I don't want um, Let's edit that down. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, hold oh, on. I was supposed to be scared. Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, yes, I think that, um, yeah, horror and comedy take a lot of timing, and quite frankly, um, a lot of times I'll take those over dramatic movies. Um, there are too many. Horror right now, like, movie wise, I think is having a pretty good run of stuff. Like, I there's. Watched anything so long. I actually uh, got Shudder um, because there's some good stuff that's like out. So. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but the Bloomhouse is pretty good. You know, they don't spend a lot of money on stuff and they tend to put out a lot of movies. A24 puts out some creepy stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I haven't watched it yet, but I want to... Um, in my Shyamalan's new one, the Knock at the Cabin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's on Peacock, too. <laughs> no, it's also on uh, Amazon. Okay, cool. So. Yeah. Um, With Dave I Bautista love... and uh, Rupert Grant. Oh, okay. No, no, it's not. Okay. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's basically, it's, we're, you know, a day away from fall. Um, so, <laughs> True. so, uh, I'm like, all right, I should probably start rolling out the old, I love the old universal black and white movies, <laughs> the Frankenstein, uh, Dracula, um, Bride of Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Invisible Man, yeah. And so the black and white movies I would break out would be Young Frankenstein, <laughs> Doctor Strange Love and How I Learned to Love the bo- Atomic Bomb. <laughs> There's another one. It's on Amazon. It's a little bit creepier, but if you get a chance, it's a good movie, and it's called Night of the Hunter with Robert Mitchum. And uh, that one's that one's good. Well, that and then... Um, mm-hmm. I think it was mostly black and white, but the... Uh, it's on Disney. It's... Um, Oh, it was just the, a one shot type the thing. The Marvel one shot with the wolf. Yeah, the wolf, uh, oh, werewolf. Uh, werewolf by night? Yeah. Yeah, that one wasn't bad. I watched that before we canceled <clears throat> Disney. <laughs> Plus. So. Um, that was, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, that it, just reminds me, I, that, that, that would be something I would want to do uh, if we when we play Marvel again. I want. I, I would. I wouldn't want to be Moon Knight, mm-hmm. but I, I, My character, I think, would be one of the avatars for one of the other oh, gods. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Whether it's Egypt, um, Rome, or any of the other pantheons. Mm-hmm. Not Norse, since that's already covered by Thor. <laughs> well, uh, Norse <laughs> and Marvel. So. Yeah. Is there is there a role playing game with um, some of the old school Universal monsters? I'm assuming there must be. Mm. No. No, really. Okay. No, you'd have to you'd have to make them. You can make them easily in Marvel. You can just make a whole thing for, for Frankenstein, and there's vampires all over the place. And yeah. Elves and, mm-hmm. and do the same thing using. Creatures, long black lagoons. There's probably fish people. In. Yeah, I was gonna say you uh, you mm-hmm. could probably do the same thing with Invisible whether it's uh, Dungeons and Dragons or there's mummies, Invisible Men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we yeah. can make a freak like the there's a team called the Freak Force where mm-hmm. you can just be monsters. There's... Yeah, it'd be pretty fun. Gotcha. And Marvel's really easy to play. Yeah, like really easy. So. I like the way you emphasize that for me, as you should, <laughs> <laughs> because that really sells me on it. <laughs> you have a table, and you have to roll on the table, and uh-huh. then you're like, okay, I hit. Oh, no, I didn't hit. All right. That's fair. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, when it gets to, like, 
Okay, so you can do this, but here's this, and there's that, and there's this. You have to roll these 15, but you add this, and you take away that. And I'm, in my head, it, it just, I, I just, it, there's a slow... Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're like, did you understand that? And I'm like, yes, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't understand it, but I'm not, I don't want to listen to it again. <laughs> like, so... Did you get that? Yes, I did. <laughs> I had someone who once like gave me this book and it's like, Do you read this book? It has really great and like the first couple of pages had a whole bunch of misspellings. <laughs> and so I like threw it in my <laughs> desk and I closed it and they're like, Did you read that book? And I'm like, Yes. Yes I did. And I, I just I n- n- I will never read it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what well, we we can do I'm gonna show you how how easy it is to play Call of Cthulhu real quick, right? So I'm gonna give you Here's your character sheet. Mm-hmm. Here's your character sheet. 1920s era investigator. Okay. So Ooh, are you going to do the transatlantic added accent? Uh, I think you have to. I don't know if I can do it. I want to, though, but I can't. Um, <laughs> I will listen to a few of them and see if I can pull it off. There's a chance. I, will, I should do it like uh, Orson Welles. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is real easy. So this is, this is I had to do this by myself because this is a mm-hmm. one-person game for so mm-hmm. this part right here. So, we don't have anything set up, right? Nothing. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to read a little bit, and then you're going to tell me pretty much choose your own adventure, right? Mm, nice. Is what this is. I mean, not choose your own adventure, because <coughs> they're super litigious, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> pick your... Pack. Pick your destiny books. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> and, no, I didn't. I died. I died. I died. I died. I made it. <laughs> there, there are some cool books, um, some podcasts that do roll your or they do do those. So I've, I've heard fun. like I've listened to one that I thought was okay. Um, There's and then, some guys here that do it. Really yeah. nice. That they do there. I'll have to. I I've been picking my. I only have. Um, I I created a spreadsheet for all the podcasts I listen to. Yeah. With ratings Thanks. and quick summaries because. I did so many that I lose track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just started listening to Rob Liefeld's podcast about mm-hmm. 90s comics. Oh, my God. It's so funny. <laughs> nice. He's just all over the place. I'm like, oh, all right, I can see it. That's how your art is, too. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, some of the stuff he brought up, I was like, ooh. Yeah, I bet it was that guy. Okay. Um, all right. The sun is high in the sky, a merciless ball of heat. You feel scorched by the time you reach the bus halt in front of Osborne's drugstore. It's a relief to put down the heavy cases and take off your hat for the moment. You fan your face. It's been a long summer here in your hometown, and yet curious, and yet a curiously empty one. You look across the street at the grubby butcher shop, the grocer's, the grocer's with its faded awning and the shabby tobaccoist. Mistrustful faces glare at you as they pass, eyeing your clothes and luggage. It was your parents' choice to live here, not yours. You were happy down down south as a child, among Providence's white-walled houses and leafy churchyards. Perhaps perhaps your new job in Arkham will supply the change you need. Yet everybody you know in the world lives here. You know nobody in Arkham, not one soul. You ask yourself one last time if you are doing the right thing. The answer is here. None None of your supposed friends have come to see you off. You are alone. Whatever challenges lie in Arkham, it will be a new life, and a brave one. A small gray motor coach approaches and rattles to a stop. You put on your you put your hat back on and pick up your cases. Go to 263. So it's just exactly like a Choose Your Own Adventure. So. It is. But not a Choose Your Own Adventure, because they're super litigious. <laughs> right. It's a... I always have to like, okay, in the 263, and then hold my finger here, and then... Yeah, go back to it. Yeah, I forget. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Two young men with swollen, uh, sullen expressions alight from the coach. One looks up to you. One looks up at you and down before heading away. The driver also steps down, glancing at you before crossing the road to visit the tobacconist. When he returns, he is rolling a cigarette between his yellowed fingers. He gives you, he gives a final twist and examines you as he reaches for his matchbox. He's a thin man in his fifties, dressed with a stained shirt with the bus company emblem. Yet his eyes are sharp with the dark sockets. Where to? You know, you know him from. Wait, you know him, 
Oh, you sh- God damn. Okay, I need new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you show him your ticket for Ossipi. I don't know where Ossipi is. But uh, from there, you will connect to Rochester and Portsmouth before the coastal line for Newburyport and finally Arkham. You should be able to afford a rail ticket for at least some of the way. Otherwise, this will be the first of many of long bus trips. Mm-hmm. The bus driver smashes, lights, uh, scratches his ma- the match and lights a cigarette. The end flares and takes a draw. Then he exhales and gestures the back of the coach. Luggage back up there. So look at your investigator. Mm-hmm. Um, at the top, you have spaces for eight characteristics. Strength, constitution, pow, is power, dexterity, appearance, size, intelligence, and education. Allocate the following values to them, writing them in the small squares beside them. Uh, you have 140, 350s, 260s, a 70, and an 80. So, mm-hmm. um, butter, uh, where's that marker? So you have a 40, 50, 50, 50, 50 60, 60. 70 and 80. So you can put those in those spaces in the first one where it says reg. Gotcha. Now, this all depends on how you can, you want your character to be, right? If it's super smart, super, super tough, or whatever. That's intuition, appearance. Dexterity. Appearance, okay. Size, education, constitution. You've done that. Go to page number eight. You got one missing. You got three fifties. There you go. All right. The driver smokes and watches you as you drag your case to the back of the motor coach. The rack is set inconveniently high on the vehicle. You get a grip on the heavy you get a grip on your heavier case. If your size is forty, go to twenty three. Anybody size under forty? Uh, under forty, no, but I am at forty. I'm is at 40? forty, I'm size two. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to number twenty three. So you struggle for a few seconds before the driver comes up beside you and lends you a hand. Still puffing on a cigarette. Heavy bags for a small one, he remarks. You judge it best to respond with a simple thanks. Go to 233. So, I thought I had to do all of these when I was doing that. I was like, oh my shit. <laughs> <laughs> 233. Okay, so I was like, oh, 223, that's at the end. Okay, I was going to say, that's really fast. Um, the driver flicks his cigarette into the gutter and steps into the motor coach. Its engine coughs into life. You board, grateful that you will be the only passenger for this initial part of the trip. With mixed emotions, you watch from the window the tired avenues from your old home slip beside, slip behind you, receding into the distance. For a few minutes, you can still see the church spine over the brow of the low hill. Then the road dips, and, into, and it too is gone. Arkham is your new home. You will travel there and make a new start. Uh, you will see two smaller boxes to the right of each characteristic value. Each value... Half each value rounding down and write the result in the upper, in the right. So uh, when it says half, you're going to take half of those numbers. Out of all the numbers? Yep. Okay. So. And then. And then also divide each value by five, again rounding down. So the 70 divided by five. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take care of the easy five? one. We're, the, the, the <laughs> We're dividing by five again? Uh, yeah, so you take your regular and then you divide it by five. And then you have it as a half and then a fifth. Right, so Wait, you're taking your regular and dividing it by five or you're taking your half and dividing it by five? Um, you're taking your regular and dividing it by five. So if you have a 70, your regular is, fifth, is 14. If you have an 80, it's 16. Uh, 40 is 8. And 60 is 12. So 15 divided by 5? 15? 
Which one are you dividing with five? The Sorry. 50. All of them. Uh, the big ones. The 70, the 80, the 40, the... Oh, yeah. yeah. The regulars. The big ones. Yep. Okay, all divided by five. Yep. Okay. In the strip below, you will see tracks that record sanity and magic points. Beginning sanity is equal to your original POW. Which one's gone? I was promised no math, by the way. Okay, so if you have a... 70 is a 14, an 80 is a 16, a 40 is an 8, and a 60 is a 12. 12, 40 is 8, 60 is 12, 80 is what? 80 is 16. Alright, we're good. So now. Uh, what was the 50? Uh, 10. 10. Okay, I did that right. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, in the strip below, you'll see tracks that record sanity. And magic points. So there should be sanity and magic points, right? Um, right here or right here? Uh, right there. Magic points. Yeah. Right there? Yeah. I okay. don't know why it says there, but yeah. <laughs> um, you will see tracks that record sanity and magic points. Beginning sanity is equal to your pal. So 60. And beginning magic points are the same as your value that you just assigned for your pal divided by 5. 60 divided by 5. 60 divided by 5 is current? Is, uh... No, your magic points. Is your magic points. 60 divided by 5. 12. Okay. Go to the 134. And your character sheet's pretty much done. <laughs> but you're trying to hold on to sanity points in the land of Cthulhu. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not realize power was that important. I would have... <laughs> <laughs> Chosen better. Right. <laughs> right. Now, the coach putters through the countryside. At first, the interior is stifling and your stomach lurches with every bend in the road. However, the driver opens his window, and by switching seats, you can find a spot where the breeze hits your face. You soon relax in your journey, observing the quaint little hamlets that the coach serves. A heavy set woman boards at one settlement and gives you a polite nod. She gets off at the next one. The roadside. The road rises a little passing cornfields and orchards. The leaves are turning and the trees are alive with glorious reds and golds. You have just begun to doze when the driver takes a tight bend at speed. Um, add size and con together. Add size? Regular? Yeah. Yep. All right. Size and con, and then okay, divide by you. 10. Okay. Okay. This is the starting value for your hit points. Okay. Your current total may drop, but it is unlikely to exceed the starting value. You have, you also have a luck score. Roll three six-sided dice. We call this 3d6 and multiply your 3d6 by 5. Oh, that's... <laughs> Ew. Right. Okay, so it's 3d6. So like, as in real life, my luck sucks. <laughs> and then 3d6 times 5. Times 5. So yeah. 3d6, so 12 times 5. That is your luck score. 7 times 5, 35. 12, 12 times 5. 60. Thank you. It's luck. <laughs> <sighs> All right. We got a lot more than he does. Now... Those dice you must fire. make a roll against Dex. Roll a d100. This is uh, your two tens. I don't think I have. Oh, okay, two tens. Yeah. So you got this one, which is your tens, and then this one, which is your ones. Okay. Right. Now, if your roll on your Dex is less, you pass the roll. If your Dex is, if your roll is higher than your Dex, you fail. I failed. So Six. this one, you want to roll low. Um, I rolled less. You rolled less, so you passed and you failed. So um, we could do either. Well, let's just go to we failed. So we'll go fifty nine. That's fine. Missed it by seven. Oh, okay. 
59, that makes it easier. A desperate yell awakens you. You feel yourself a slide from your seat and the driver spins the wheel and the motor coach plunges off the road. Too late! You reach for the seat in front of you. You fall into the aisle and rub, and your ribs crash against the edge of the seat opposite. If this was like further adventure, there would be a monster that comes in and grabs you and throws you like... Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you die a lot. There, there's a lot of death in this. The coach stops with a thumb. The driver leaps from the seat and into the road. As you sprawl dizzy from the aisle, you hear a string of incendiary curses. The driver climbs back into the cab and sees you on the floor. He looks concerned and assists you back in your seat. You see that's happening now. A force and tractor has stopped in the road, and you had to swerve to avoid the steel obstacle. Sorry, he says. All these fields, and he just had to pick this road to park. Are you all right? You don't think anything's broken, but you'll have to colorful Bruce for the next few days. He backs the coach up and a little on the threads and threads it around the tractor, glaring at the farmer. You lost one hit point. Mark the loss on your investigator sheet. So keep that mark mine too? Yep. Okay. So keep track of the original value. So, pretty much. So now we're going to 71. So you missed one thing. But yeah, see, it's just so easy to make your character. You resume your journey. The driver takes the curves with the more caution than before. He glances over his shoulder at this a couple times. Sorry about that before, he says. That bell is dumber than a hog. I'm Silas. What's your name? The accident was at least as much as Silas's fault as the farmer's, but it would be... doesn't seem shrewd to antagonize a man while he is driving through the middle of nowhere. Make up a name for your character. Go down your fish. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You may add your age for the purposes of this adventure. Your character should be around the ages of 23 to 36. Because if you get older, your scores go down. Gotcha. Your intelligence will probably go up, but your, your strength and stuff goes down. Mm -hmm. And your speed and all that. Um, coach turns around a narrow road while weaves uphill through woodland. Silas comes chatty. Going Ark, mate. Can't say I've ever heard of that place. I went to Boston once. Didn't like it. Too much hustle and bustle. You got a family there? Special someone waiting? Jesus Christ doesn't even answer uh the afternoon is wearing on you see no harm in confiding with silas about your new life a new job eh what's your line um antiquarium book page one or two doctor of medicine 236 journalist private investigator or professor it would help if you guys just choose one professor or private investigator i was thinking private investigator Probably still private investigator right yeah. 249 because <laughs> He's the only one that has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> good, it's good. Uh, right. Skirt around the details of the profession in the usual way, mentioning only that you have helped the police to clear up various problems in the past. Your heart pounds a little faster as you think of the post you have secured in the Blackwood Detective Agency. You've had enough of investigating marital infidelity and bank clerks to take... What, we're not with the Pinkertons? By the way, Pinkertons be? still exist. I know. <laughs> Fucking weird. <laughs> it is. Uh, it sounds like the Blackwood Agency is just the opportunity you need to cut your teeth in some, into some real villainy. Silas narrows his eyes, but he says nothing. Your credit rating is 20. So 20%. Your occupation skills are... Which... Um, so Paul that's... Thule is weird because you don't mark them off. Right? You don't mm -hmm. you don't do that unless until you, like... Um, you successfully do a role on that one. So you never, mm -hmm. like, hit the mark. Right? You just, uh, your occupation skills are art and craft, photography, disguise, law, or disguise, law, library use, psychology, spot hidden, and one of either charm, fast talk, intimidate, or persuade. So, um, in those, you may also pick, you may also pick any other skill except Cthulhu Mythos as a personal specialty. Allocate the following skills. <laughs> 70, 60, 60, 50, 50, 40, and 40 to any of those. To which ones? Um, I remember nothing. <laughs> uh, art and craft, art which is called, craft. which we oh. you just type or put in photography. Disguise. Law. Library use. Psychology, spot hidden, and then you can choose between charm, fast talk, intimidate, or persuade.
And did we do anything with the percentages next to those skills at all? Um, yep, you gotta assign one of these to it. And you did, right? Not yet. Okay, those but percentages? Some, yeah. No, no, not yet. Okay. Ignore any stated value already mentioned on the investigator sheet. I'm gonna go to 128. It really doesn't matter if it's correct. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> no, I just lost track of like where the marks were. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. All right. You realize Silas hasn't made a stop since the incident. The motor coach winds the way uphill. However, your thoughts are interrupted by the road crest a ridge, and you are treated to a magnificent view of the vista below. A creek snakes through the valley, breaking the rich autumn palette with the tree line. In the distance, the white mountains rise as a hazy cloud. There's no settlement, not even a cabin, as far as the eye can see. Birds drift through the treetops, and you just make out what might be two white-tailed deer lingering in the water, or by the water. Perhaps you were making a mistake by moving to the city. Could you survive on your own in this lush wilderness? You have the base ability in your skills list in the brackets after your skill name in the investigator sheet. For instance, you have a 20% in climb and a base dodge. Uh, for instance, you have 20% in climb and a base dodge equal to half your dex. Right? Is that what we got? No. Choose four skills, which you are not occupation skills. These are your personal interest skills. Boost each of them by 20%. At this point, you would like to calculate half and one food values. Why is there math? <laughs> Why is there math? You promised. <laughs> right, so we're going to go 144. Okay. We don't have to do that. Uh, I just want to get in the story. Story's cool. 144. Um, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, I know exactly where this is heading. <laughs> the motor coach rattles on through the hills, and Silas laps into silence. The darkness behind you... Pink's planting the twelve. God, I need to learn to read. <laughs> Finally, a welcome sight comes into view. A settlement on the crest of a hill. This doesn't look like the pictures you've seen of, of Sippy, but perhaps you can persuade Silas to stop while you are while you stretch your legs. Minutes later, a harsh stuttering from the engine interrupts your reverie. Silas frowns and rattles the gear stick. The motor coach falters in an... Uh, the motor coach falters in its ascent. Silas utters a curse... You don't recognize and grinds his teeth. Struggling at the wheel, you see an inch up the hill until you reach the first building's low dwellings structure constructed from a rough redstone. Silas wrestles the coach into a small bay off the road. He scrambles from his seat and makes it an engine compartment. You must now choose to make a roll against drive auto or psychology. If you choose drive auto, you need to roll equal to or less than the skill value. If you choose psychology, you need hard success. Hard success is a roll equal to or less than half your skill value, which is the half, right? So that, that's a hard value, and that's an extreme. So you have to get under those. Um, so if you choose to write against auto, or uh, you choose to roll against psychology, what do you choose? Psychology? Sounds good. Okay. Right. You need a hard success for psychology. Which one am I rolling? The D hundred. Yep. The hundred and the this uh, not that one. This the one? Yep. Okay. There you go. And I'm trying to roll low? Yep. Yes. The thing too is if you have Oh, look at that. A hundred. hundred. You <laughs> <laughs> can't get any higher than that. Nope. 
37 I mean, for me. Zero. So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so if you guys want to choose to fail, you guys want to choose to do it. It doesn't matter to me. I think we should do it. I mean, Jason rolled before he I did, did. He did. He did. 162. So, uh-huh. uh, we're, we're not going to count what you just did. We're just, it's, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> You're horrible! Just no, no, no. back off in a corner! <laughs> You sense a false If I had a dunce hat, you'd be wearing it right now. Like, no. <laughs> you sense a falseness in Silas's actions. He's acting. Either he is not as aggravated about the breakdown as his behavior suggests, or perhaps the breakdown itself is an act. If this is a ruse to make you spend your time and money in a local shop, he will be sadly disappointed in your purchasing power. Because you have no plan. <laughs> on the investigator sheet, check mark the small box on the left on the word psychology. If you have successfully completed this adventure, you'll have the opportunity to learn about your experience with Silas. So page 194. So um, you mark those because later on, uh, I'm going to ask if you guys succeeded in any of your roles, and then you get a special bonus for those. Mm. Um, Silas opens the engine compartment open. So is it like a choice between, okay, you succeeded, now you have a less horrible death. Yes. <laughs> You could probably get some, uh, you could roll on your luck or something like that. I, I'm not going to lie. I've been reading some uh, um, horror stories and some of the um, not Cthulhu, but Cthulhu-like stuff came up. And it's like, yeah, this is just, uh, I mean, you get to the Cthulhu stuff and it's a little um, <laughs> racist. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> well, but, it's, it was the time. Uh, he was also really bad for the time. Yes. <laughs> but... But it does, it like, the stories that developed from it, the idea and the concepts from it outside of that part of it is interesting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm just going to paraphrase. Uh, so, you, you walk up to Silas and you're like, uh, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, you know, uh, something with the engine. You know, we're mm-hmm. going to have to wait till tomorrow. Um, there's an inn right over there. Um, uh, this, this town is called Emberhard, Emberhard? yeah, Emberhead, and uh, there's a a, uh, a little place over there, um, uh, May Ledbetter's place. She uh, she'll let you hold up for the night if you want. Um, probably best because the the hotel is kind of shit. She's kind of the best place in town. Can we sleep in the car? Um. To look for May Ledbetter's house, go to 267. To ask Silas where you will spend the night, go to 251. To challenge Silas about the breakdown, go to 257. Challenge. <laughs> I ch- Jason's like, that's not the right decision. She said it first, 257. <laughs> you confront Silas with your suspicions. His brow, dark, brow darkens and he shows a mo- mouthful of twisted teeth. Ain't that just the way of you city types, he spits. Thinking the worst of a man when he's gone all his way to attend to your comfort. He stalks around the back of the coach and hauls your bags in the rack, dumping them to the ground as you feet. Take them. Otherwise, I guess he'll be accusing me of thriver, thriver, thievery in the morning. He marches off into the darkness, raging. That could have gone better. Go to 267. <laughs> Jason. Uh. I like watching Jason's head. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you... Uh, he kicks you off the bus, and you uh, go to find the Ledbetter place to get some room, get a room. Um, you rap on the bang the door. Go to page four. Um, this, <laughs> I'm not doing her accent. I'm sorry. Uh, she's got an Irish accent. <laughs> After a moment, you hear footsteps inside the house. A bolt is drawn, and the wooden door opens. A uh, figure stands. Uh, it's a woman. Um, not very like a, just a normal woman for like 1920 um she's got an irish accent hello should i take it that you're looking for a room for the night and uh you ask her about how much it is and, uh, you can't really pay her that much but she says um no it's okay um that's fine um i do have a room it's fine. uh you can explain to her what happened with the coach or you can go to uh the festival in town that they're having for the night festivals like hang out at the festival mm-hmm. all right i mean wrong. i've read something wicked this way comes and i know that going to festivals in the middle of a town especially when it might be an unexpected one just goes great <laughs> great book by the way <laughs> yeah well now i suppose the festival is about the only reason people come to emberhead 
I thought you would come to study or take photographs. Well, it's not tomorrow night. It's the night after, so really not tonight. But I, I suppose it looks very strange to a passerby. May tops up your tea and spouts chinks the spout chinks across her cup. I don't know why they have so much detail. <laughs> to immerse you in the storyline. Oh, there you go. We've got the beacon, you see. One night, every year, a torchlight procession, we have a torchlight procession, and we light the beacons up on the cliff. You've never seen the like of it. They say it keeps the spirits of the village alive for another year. It's a celebration. A celebration! She tails off for a moment and blinks. But you didn't come here to listen to me blather, but you must be hungry. I can rustle you up with some stew. How could that be? You ask again about the rates, and May themes a price so low that you accept it without hesitation. The room is small and comfortable, and the stew is dark and hearty. After dinner, you have a couple of hours before the usual bedtime. To talk to May, go to 31. To walk around and get your bearings, go to 75. To turn in early, go to 63. Jason, you better answer before I do. Turn in early. <laughs> 63. <laughs> As May stands, you hear a clunk behind you. You look over your shoulder, and all you can see is the wooden door securely closed. May tuts. The young lady of the house, she's been listening to us. Ruth! Come and meet our guest. There's a small pause, and the door creaks open. Two little, two wide eyes peer from you between the gap, being between tousled hair and a rough nightgown. What did you say? The eyes blinked. Pleased to meet you. Now get back to bed. The door closes again. My daughter Ruth, 10 years this summer. She's a delight and a torment all in one. Don't worry, she sleeps in with me. She won't disturb you. Good night now. You retired to your room, a little chilly, but you have her. But you are too tired to worry about lighting the fire. The sheets are clean and the beds are warm. Soon warms up. The silence outside is strange after living in a town for so long. But you soon drop off. Go to 154. You dream of fire in the gate. Compass coruscating colors shimmer through the dancing tongues of flame. At first, there are tiny, almost microscopic, but they grow and grow until a kaleidoscope inferno spills from the fireplace spreading across the floor of the sheets. You wake with a start. Daylight glints around the curtains. You get up and examine the grate, blinking and sleep, blinking the sleep from your eyes. It's quite cold. If you've taken any damage, you can heal one point back from your night's sleep. Go to 166. Uh, okay, uh, so right now you are uh, you wake up, you're going to head out and do some sightseeing. If you succeeded a skill roll last night and you wish to investigate the results further, go to 178. Otherwise, go to 192. So, you did. And you got one. You succeeded. Either we can talk about what you did, or we can just go on. One night, we're going to go on. <laughs> you don't want to sit and discuss? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a joke. <laughs> You're already tired of the heavy bags. Hopefully Silas will repair the motor coach, and you will resume your long journey. A sour puss he might be, but the old driver seemed to understand his vehicle well enough. You pause to check your watch. Still 20 minutes early. You round the next corner. The motor coach is gone. You put your bags down and search the area, trekking up and down the slopes from another corners, around corners. At the edge of the village, you trace the long road back in as it winds across the hills. Eight o'clock comes and goes. There's no coach to be seen. A passing villager notices your bags. Looking for the bus? I heard him take off last night. He's due back in three to four days. If you need a place to stay, may Ledbetter's room or rent a room. The man raises his hat and strolls on by the, and into the village. You curse Silas under your breath. Motherfucker. <laughs> Perhaps you went for the parts, but you wonder if the old goat has stranded you here on purpose. Go to 218. May is doing laundry. Um, so you explain that uh, it's gone, you know, nobody was there. And she tells you that nobody in town has a car. Mm -hmm. She strokes her chin and narrows her eyes. Maybe you could find someone with a horse or a cart or some ba for your bags. You could, I, could, I could ask around. You know, uh, I could ask Mr. Winters with the village hall. He might know. 
uh, or you can uh, ask maybe some of the artisans in town. There's workshops, you know, uh, Salisbury Street. She uh, reaches over and squeezes your wrist. Don't worry, I won't see you sleeping in the street. Money or no money, you may stay with me. You thank May and uh, turn to the village. Go to number six. I like the way it's just like the six, yeah. eighteen, thousand. Yeah. <laughs> what um, do you want? You wander down the streets of the town, and uh, um, you can you wander down the streets without any particular destination in mind. The village is built on a relatively flat upland with splendid views to the north. The hazy tips of the white mountains reach the heavens, while the south, the sparkling waters of Lake Winnipegasaki. <laughs> Yeah, Winnipegasaki. Uh, touch the horizon. The village itself is less than five minutes to cross from edge to edge. You arrived on the winding road to the west. The other, the only other road leads to the south, following the lower ridge to the land that runs east. In the southwest of the village, the open grassy poor blah blah blah. blah uh, to the northwest, three main structures meet as a raised metal structure. It looms stark against the male like the sky. You can ask about transport at the local store, um, seek the village hall, walk down to the lower level and check out the eastern road, examine the large metal structure, explore the church, go to the local people with their own transportation needs. Um, yeah, uh, If you want to go to the general store, it's 16. If you want to go to the village hall, it's 84. If you want to check out the eastern road, it's 115. Examine the large metal structure is 57, the church is 34, and look for local people with their own transport needs is go to number 6. Do you want to find a vehicle or do you want to look at the structure? I kind of want to look at the structure. I was going to say, like, it's the <laughs> fastest path to death, but I kind of want to look at it. I mean, it's just like, you know it's going to be like, oh, here, here it is. Ah. <laughs> Middle structure, small town. <laughs> yes, this hmm. this can't possibly be wrong. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I can like, see Nick. Like as soon as we said it, I could just see Nick just. Oh. No, like this is the exact way I went. Um, <laughs> and by now, I was like, oh, I know where this book is. I know exactly where this book is. You walk up to the approach in the most central of the and village. The monster came streets. out and went. Yeah, la, la, la. And it points directly <laughs> to the old. Odd metal structure. As you emerge from the shade of the nearby buildings, you are greeted by a magnificent panorama spread from the north to the southeast. The last colors of fall, tinge of hills, leafy gold. The structure, by contrast, is made of an uncompromising iron, singed black. It's supposed to, and it supports an immense curved platform at the level of your head. Further struts snake up from the central point. It looks like they may have some kind of sculpture at one time, but have now twisted and melted beyond recognition. The old gentleman passes, looking up from the roomy eyes. Are you here for the festival, yes? That's the beacon. When they light it, n night after next, you'll be able to see it for ten miles away. He gives a quick nod of satisfaction and moves on, leaning on his walking stick. Now you notice bundles of wood tied and stacked against the building nearby. Perhaps the festival would be an interesting diversion, but you really must head to Arkham as soon as possible. Make a spot hidden roll. If you succeed, go to 69. Otherwise, go to 25. Yep, 100. 100, okay. So, so you have a spot hidden. Just a regular roll? Yep. Yeah. Failed. You what was I supposed to do? Go under your spot hidden roll. Go under? Yep. 41, 60. I was under. So you, you got one. Do you want to you wanna spot it or you want to not spot it? I want to spot it. Alright, so... And it works because I six got the first one you get the next one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Da, 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 da. 69. As you walk away from the iron structure... No, you have to say 69. <laughs> dudes. <laughs> As you walk away from the iron structure, you notice something strange about the construction of the village. All the wooden dwellings are con concentrated in the west and the southwest. To the east and northeast, closest to the beacon, the buildings are formed with dark brick and clay. Does that mean the settlement began at the beacon and spread west? You may check mark the small box next to spot hidden there. Now go to 25.
You are beginning to get your bearings on Emberhead. Would you like to explore more? You may choose either of the below. Do not repeat a previous choice. Once you have tried four options or before that, you can move on. Um, you can look for transport. You can go to the village hall. You can walk down the lower level. You can explore the... Don't want to do the metal structure again. Go to the church and the people of transport. Uh, let's say we do all three of them. Um, there's really nothing that they say. <laughs> You're pretty much screwed. Yeah, there's no there's no car. Uh, there's no way to get out of town. Uh -huh. um, it's probably... It's, it's, yeah, you're, you're you're pretty much screwed. You gotta you gotta stay where you are. That's pretty much all it's gonna tell you. It's it's it's. I'm you, having flashbacks you to like get, school. You, yeah, <laughs> you just gotta get creepy Flash small town that don't like visitors. This this like has more meaning I think for me. <laughs> more meaning or more trauma. <laughs> I'm gonna go home, suck my thumb, rock myself to sleep. <laughs> it's all over now. It's all over now. <laughs> So you uh, you go back to your hotel or May's place, and uh, you wake up hungry. And you go out and you look for a restaurant to eat, like a place for breakfast. Um, coming down the street, May's there, and her daughter Ruth is behind her, and uh, they catch up to you. And uh, Ruth smiles at you, and she says. She blinks hard and scuttles back towards her mom. Um, I mean, I was kind of thinking that, and like, we were all thinking that to begin with. Her like, mom's all like, of us, like, <laughs> "Oh, uh, have you found any transport out of town? Or, or you're gonna, you're gonna stay with me the night? That'd be great. I mean, uh, we don't have many visitors here." And uh, um, uh, startled, you explain the frustrations of your situation. I tried, she says, uh, I tried Miss Winters in the village hall. Um, he's always in the end of this afternoon. Um, if you're hungry, um, help yourself to any food in our house. You know, it's fine. Um, the door's not locked. You glance at Ruth, where she has squirreled behind her mom's leg. Her eyes implore you to silence. If you ask Ruth about what she said, go to 9. If you ask Ruth uh, May about what Ruth said, go to 15. If you say nothing, go to 22. Say nothing. Say nothing. Go to 22. Gonna, like, don't gonna, torture you're gonna, you're that kid. Him. Get out now. Like, 22. Like, you're going to say, oh, hey, did you know what your daughter just said to me? Like, why would you do that? That's... Yeah. Um, so, that reminds me of, like, those people, like, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you head back, and you go to the Ledbetter's house, and you get some food. Um... You see out the window, there's the mountains. Um, you learned one thing this morning, is that Emberhead streets hold little to occupy a visitor from out of town. Um, you are still about five hours of daylight remaining. You could take provisions, bare essentials from your luggage. Um, if you prepare and walk out, to walk out of town, go to page 28. If you head to the village hall instead, go to Will Leather. Walk out of town? <laughs> um, you take money, water, and some sandwiches. It seems polite to leave May Ledbetter a note explaining the situation and that you will return with the bags as Never soon as leave possible. a note! <laughs> the sky is flecked. Uh, a couple of villagers watch you pass by. You shiver as you pass the lower huts and head to Emberhead. Out of Emberhead. As you... After the miserable enclosed streets of Emberhead, you are refreshed to the open air. An hour later, however, the empty road ceases to be a novelty and you just have entered the first patch of woodland where the hear an eerie, hilting, or lilting howl from the north. Make a natural world roll. If you succeed, go to 35. Um, is this also... Oh, God. Yep. Am I going for low, or... You're going for low. Go. Yeah. If I ask you for uh, intelligence check, for, yeah. like, psychosis, yeah. you want to... You don't want to make that roll. You want to fail that roll, because if, if you... 27. If you make that roll, it means you're smart enough to know... I made it! it. Oh shit! All right. <laughs> if you see, you go to thirty-five. <laughs> the call is that of coyote coming into the area. The sound can be frightening, particularly at night. But the coyotes have learned to avoid humans. You can proceed without fear. Um, now you can mark that you made that. Which one? Uh, natural, natural world. world. Go to fifty-four. Natural. A second call answers the first, but it sounds further away. You follow the road toward the woodland. Branch and Lee. Branches lean over the road. The foliage is quite beautiful, from gold to russet and the deep, rich red. 
Fallen leaves crunch beneath your feet. After about half an hour, you emerge from the streets. From the trees, the road makes a lazy curve towards the foothills ahead. And another patch in the woodland. A rough track seems to offer a shortcut through the woods. So you guys are going on a completely different way than I did. Mm-hmm. I went and I I talked to Ruth about what she said. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I ended up being um, Wicker Man. Ah, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, if you head up the hill, try a spotted settlement, go to 60. Um, if you tried try the track, go to 85. If you stick to the safety of the road, go 103. Safety of the road. 103. Safety of the road or the track? What's the track? Track Stay that's off just... the moors. We'll go with Jason. Jason doesn't step out of 90. Yeah, it's American World in London. There's no American guarantee World that the track <laughs> leads back to the road you were following. Better way to stay on course, even if it takes longer. But you weren't comfortable aware of I'm comfortably aware that the sun getting setting behind you as you walk on. Fifteen minutes later, you are passing a natural clearing when you catch a movement out of the corner of your eye. About thirty yards away, something large lingers on the tr- at the trunk. It is about your height and black, with small wooden ear- like rounded ears. As you watch, it rears up on its hind legs. A bear! It seems almost interested in your fruit hanging above it. If you want to get a closer look... <laughs> what?! If you remain motionless, go to 116. If you make a deliberate slow retreat, go to 122. I like, I like that bear. Slow retreat. Slow retreat. 122. You've heard the bears are not aggressive, but why take the chance when you are alone, miles from help? You move away with careful, quiet steps. The bear shows no interest to you at all. Go to 79. Nice job. You return to the road and resume your walk east. At least you hope you are heading east. The curves of the road become disorienting when the light begins to fade. Clouds from the hind, clouds hide behind stars. It makes you not reach. It seems you will not reach another settlement before dark, and you feel weariness in your legs. The air is much cooler now. Make a hard listen roll. If you succeed, go to 240. If you fail, ooh, a hard listen. So hard listen. Yep. Yeah, so you gotta get under hard. I don't know. Nope. No, I don't think so. What's hard listen? So, uh, like for for me, um, uh, hard listen. I'd have to roll below ten. Where's hard listen at? It's, so it listen, listen, and then you do the hard, which is the middle one. Let's listen, let's listen. Half. So listen's right there. So you put a number right here. Okay. So it'd be half of that. So it'd be twenty-five. You have to get under twenty-five. Oh yeah, no. Nope. Okay, so you both failed, right? Yes. Uh, go to 234. Uh-oh. Another cry splits the gloom. In the same unearthly call you heard from the, when you entered the first patch of woodland, this time it is a grating undertone that makes you shiver. It seems closer. To take refuge in a tree for the night, go to 208. Keep walking, 215. This isn't all how it's going to go. I'm not going to read mm-hmm. and tell you what you're doing, but just to get a hint of what this game is like. Do you want to keep walking? Keep walking. 250. Why not? <laughs> Unappealing as it is to keep walking through the dark, the idea of hiding in a tree while wild, wild, wild animals congregate to plan your slaughter is less than appealing. <laughs> Sooner or later, the road must lead to another settlement. You step up the pace. Go to 264. The eerie howl draws closer. They come from either side. One calls and the other answers with grim chorus, thick and hungry. They have a strange, desperate edge. You are walking as fast as you can. You hear your own breath coming hard. The trees in this area are too young to support your weight. Perhaps you should just run. But how long could you run before you had to stop? A clump of low, dark bodies slink from the trees, blocking the road ahead. Each silhouette has high, pointed ears. Their eyes glint in the moonlight. Make a sanity roll. If you succeed, go to 269. If you fail, go to 5. What's uh, sanity? Uh, right there. Yeah, you got a sanity. Nope! <laughs> 
twenty nine. This is your. It was. It was. It was insane. It was your turn to. <laughs> uh, 12, I had twenty nine and the sanity is sixty. Sixty. All right. So you you succeed. Go to two sixty nine. Oh, let's see what happens if you, go, if you fail. Mm-hmm. So number five, is mm-hmm. if you fail. Oh, you lose sanity points. That's yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Do do two sixty nine. <laughs> Even as the beast fan out around you, a black fear rises in your chest. You feel something str- like wrong here. The pack makes irritable, awkward movements. Now the patient predatory approach of not the patient predatory approach you might expect. They draw closer, circling you. You hear the rasp of their throats. You smell the thick, musky scent. They burst into flames. You gape, <laughs> fumes filling your eyes and nostrils as the creatures ignite. Eyes wide, their fur blazes. Waves of red-tinged fire dripping from their slavering jaws. They howl, a woeful cacophony, and one springs at you with in and one springs at you with an insane burning eyes. You stagger back, gulping and choking vapors, and you fall. Lose one sanity point. One? Go to prayer number thirteen. Hellhounds. Oh, the skin of your face feels warm. There's a mattress beneath you. You blink against the moonlight. A blurred figure swims in your vision. You awake? It's May. May led better. You shift and pain racks your body. You feel bruised and your heart throbs. Or your head throbs. May comes in focus. You're lucky to be alive. A farmer found you in a small hours, lying in the road. Hatched you up and brought you back in his cart. Said you were in the middle of the woods somewhere. Best take it easy today. I'll look at you later. Farmer and his cart are long gone, of course. You snooze a little bit longer. You have received first aid and unconscious. You may restore one hit point. So, what's going to happen? We're, mm-hmm. we're going to probably get off of it soon. Yes. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to wake up inside mm-hmm. that that thing. And, gotcha. Uh, they're going to light you on fire. You ah. stand basically. Look at the man. sacrificial lamb. Yep. <laughs> you're not getting out of this town. <laughs> so, that's what it is. Um... So let's call it Cthulhu. It's really easy to play. Yeah. Nice. And once you get that number down and those, it's it gets really fun as soon as you start going insane. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite alien, mm-hmm. where everything was just like so against you. But yeah, it's like it's fun when there's like at least a shot. Like it's you know. Yeah, you have a shot, but mm-hmm. most likely you're gonna need to have. Well, I'm gonna have them make at least two or three characters because yeah. you're gonna need them. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to one people play, and they were playing uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, cool! And, uh, there's a campaign for it, mm-hmm. right? You're traveling all around. I and am. One guy is sitting next to the the, the window. Mm-hmm. And this tentacle comes in and just rips him right on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Make your character dead. <laughs> I mean, it combines Agatha Christie with Call of Cthulhu. What could be better than that? Yeah. All right, guys. Hope you guys had fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, hope Glad to, to be here. And I hope you guys learned a little bit about uh, but why, not too why, much. why we are the way we are. Yes, but yeah. not too much. Because, you know, like Cthulhu, you have to keep your sanity points. Um <laughs> No. <laughs> it's overrated. <laughs> All right, guys. See, see you next later. time. I'll remember my sheet this time. Next time. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah.